We're in Glasgow, Missouri, getting ready to ship out. Packing up, getting ready to go, and uh, all of a sudden a Jeep pulls up. He's letting me test drive it for the day. You want to go to a basketball game? He's throwing in free tickets. So we went to a basketball game. This is insane. <laughs> What's this now? So we're having such a great time, and this cop stops me. Go ahead, skip out the vehicle. Yeah, sure, yeah. What are you doing to my Jeep, man? Jeff, don't, don't screw around, man. They got me pretty damn good. My name is Brian, and this is my best buddy. And his name is Brian too. Out of all the water in the world, only 1% is fresh water. It's all we got, and we want to explore all of it. So we've decided to start with a trip that's never been done before. A 4,000 mile journey from Milk River, Alberta, all the way down to New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, and did I mention we're gonna do it in a canoe? We're crazy? You're right. We're the paddling primes. So the first thing we noticed this morning when we got up was uh, there was some small ice chunks floating down the river. I guess it's no big deal. We can make our way around that. It's nothing, nothing serious here. Look, there's icebergs everywhere and we have the biggest canoe out in the market, kind of like the Titanic. I heard our canoe was unsinkable. Well, what's your opinion on this? I think it's unsinkable. Iceberg dead ahead. <laughs> Just as planned. <laughs> Rudder's a mid jib. So we're gonna try and track as much distance today as possible. We're still heading east on the Missouri River in the state of Missouri. So we're not getting any further south right now, but uh, this little bit of ice right here isn't gonna bug us. We're just gonna keep going and see how far we can get today. Today we're navigating through an ice field. We believe there's two reasons this ice could be here. Either they've opened up a dam which caused the water level to rise a bit, broke up all the ice frozen in the bays, and sent it, sent it down our way. That's one possibility. The other is, is that the temperature further north from us has warmed up enough to break up the ice that had formed over the past week or two, and again sent it down our way. Or maybe, I don't know why there's a whole bunch of ice here, but there's a whole bunch of ice here. This is a new one for us. <laughs> Some of these are pretty thick. We've traveled over 2,000 miles right now and we're still inching our way to Greenville, Mississippi. And the ice chunks seem to get a little bigger and bigger every day here. Look at the size of this iceberg. Get out onto this and you'll be a crazy bastard. Yeah, no. I'm gonna bring us right close to it. This is a big one. This is a good size chunk. I'm not gonna do anything stupid. I have a pretty good feeling that it's gonna hold me. This is if I fall in, I'm dead. I'm on an iceberg in the Missouri, and that's about as much fun of that as we're gonna have. Oh, iceberg! <laughs> iceberg port side! Just a sec, I wanna get an iceberg starboard side. Iceberg starboard side! Oh, that was more dead ahead. <laughs> Yet.
Wow, I didn't see this coming. We wake up this morning and everything's frozen. Even our canoe's frozen in. Paddles are like popsicles. We haven't fully decided whether we're gonna set off in this today uh, because A, we're not exactly sure if we're gonna be able to make it out of this, this mess and, uh, and B, we're not sure if we make it out into this current and into the river part that uh, we'll be able to get to shore at the end of the day. So we're, we're trying to decide what we're gonna do about that. But for now, we can't leave this canoe frozen in like this for much longer because there's so much force being pushed up against it from the rest of this ice pack that uh, we risk cracking the canoe or doing something like that. So I'm gonna break the canoe out so we can at least drag it up on dry land and figure out what we're gonna do afterwards, I guess. The ice is too thin to walk out on right now. We can't get to the edge to actually canoe. We're just gonna have to wait it out, keep the freeze going, and eventually this ice is gonna be thick enough that we can walk out to the edge, ship out into that. Look how thick that is. That's what's on the canoe. Well, this is unbelievable. I mean, I didn't think at any point in this trip that we'd actually have to deal with, with frozen water and frozen gear. Now we don't really have a choice. Now we just have to deal with it. Our canteens are frozen too. So we're gonna try and thaw our, can our canteens out here, thaw them out, get a little bit of water to drink. Yeah, we have to break the ice to head out. We'll have to bust open the ice. Although if we do head out, it's, it's gonna be cold all day. So when we try to get back in, is it gonna be impossible to get back into shore? Or we don't know. And then the second option is wait here. Although it's not warming up for another five days. So if we stay here, the only reason we would stay is so that the shoreline, the ice coming off the shoreline if that thickens up, then we could walk out on the ice, push the canoe over top until we hit the channel, and then dump in once we get into the channel. So both are pretty risky, because if we do stay here, maybe, who knows, maybe it freezes right across. Yeah. Or maybe, I don't know. It's supposed to rise to about 30 degrees, or 35, so it should be just above freezing for Tuesday. That's two days away. Yeah. Worst case, I'd say, the worst case scenario is we have to wait out today, tomorrow, and then by Tuesday we should be able to get back on the water. Yeah. I think. In many ways, I'm sick of the cold. Honestly, uh, this, this wasn't what I signed up for. I'm a little worried. It's not too <laughs> motivational to have to chip your canoe out of the ice. I don't know if the canoe's rated. I don't know if it's built for this kind of shit. I've never, I've never canoed in this before, but uh, it's also really exciting because you know what? I love adventure and this just makes it that much better. He gets excited when things like this make us make a decision. And uh, he gets excited not because we get to make a decision or because we get to show what we're made of or anything like that. He gets excited because there's a chance we can make the wrong decision and put us put ourselves in a worse situation. That's why he's such a crazy bastard. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to move this. Brian, however, is uh, probably not as enthusiastic as I am. I well, mean, maybe. I love when shit goes bad and we hit hell and high water, but uh, Brian's a little more uh, conservative, may we say. I think he's a little more worried. A little test this ice now. I'm gonna go out and test that I can walk it alone. I think it's pretty solid. And then we're gonna take the canoe out. I think it's good, Bri. Oh no, I was, I was scared. <laughs> Look, there's icebergs everywhere and we have the biggest canoe out in the market, kind of like the Titanic. This little bit of ice right here isn't gonna bug us. Today we're navigating through an ice field. This is a new one for us. <laughs> the ice chunks seem to get a little bigger and bigger every day here. If I fall in, I'm dead. We wake up this morning and everything's frozen. Even our canoe's frozen. Look in. how thick that is. That's what's on the canoe. Well, this is unbelievable. I mean, now we don't really have a choice. Now we just have to deal with it.
our plan yesterday when the ice came in and froze us all in was to wait one more day, allow the ice to get thick enough for us to walk out across so that we wouldn't have to break the ice and canoe through it. Problem is here is there's a lot of current going underneath it and the undertow would take you out from the hole you fell into and you wouldn't be able to find your way up. So that's why I'm tying my harness on. I'm gonna leash off to a solid tree. I'm gonna go out and test that I could walk it alone. And then we're gonna take the canoe out. The worst that could happen is that I fall through. So hopefully we don't have to deal with that. If we fall in, I mean, that's, that's a day in the bag right there because we get wet, we have to spend the whole day warming up, getting all of our gear dried again. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's gonna be a horrible, horrible thing if we fall in the water. <laughs> Is this situation safe? Um, I'm gonna have to say no. I'm gonna test this ice now. On this trip, this is the first time that we've actually had to pull out our harnesses. I don't have enough rope, man. We really thought that we were gonna take these harnesses out for fun, you know, for a little break during our trip, you know, to maybe go climb a mountain or, or a little cliff or something like that. But now we're actually taking the harnesses out to save us. I need more rope. If you don't have a rope and a harness, then you wanna bring a paddle with you. That way, if you fall through the ice, the paddle should catch both edges and you should be able to climb up and you'll only fall through from the waist down. Now you see, I think it's pretty solid. What we have to do is get the canoe out here. But this has only been frozen for like two days. Yeah, we should be able to walk right to the edge. All right. I'm satisfied. I think it's good, Bri. Bring the hockey skates. The coach is calling an outdoor practice. Yeah, it's good, dude. We'll tie ourselves to the boat, because the boat ain't gonna sink. We'll make our way out to the open channel. Oh no, I was, I was scared. <laughs> It was scary. Honestly, uh, I, you know, I've grown up playing on frozen rivers before, but your house was always right nearby. And if you went through, it was, it was a short run into a house, into a hot shower and, you know, dry, warm clothes. Out here, you go in the water and, and that's it. Okay, hold up. All right, I gotta get in there. Eh? All right, well, there's no more port side starboard bride, just bounce us off bergs, but soon we're gonna be playing tag on icebergs, man. I see an opening. Okay, basically just starboard when you have to, to pull us off it, and just stab us off. Well, we're going down a straightaway in the river. There is actually like the ice se separates a bit there. So we try to weave in and out and through the blocks of ice because we want to be traveling a little faster than the river's current. So we try and make our way out to the next block of ice and past that and onto another. So when we can, we try and make distance in this ice, but it's not too often that we get to actually do that.
another problem that I have to deal with. Brian likes to find icebergs and hop off. See this iceberg here? I'm gonna set up camp here. We'll just float forever. We'll be okay. This is insane. <laughs> I didn't know we were doing the northern crossing, man. Yeah. Oh. We're in big shit. I've heard of going with the flow before, but this is ridiculous. The bad thing about being out in icebergs is you can't have a fire. It's definitely the most dangerous scenario we've been in. Holy shit! We'll test this ice now. We fall in the water, we die, right? I think it's good, Bri. Oh no, I was I was scared. <laughs> it's out here, we go in the water, and that's it. All right, I gotta get in there. Eh? Soon we're gonna be playing tag on icebergs, man. This is insane. <laughs> oh. We're in big shit. Okay, there's no way we can paddle through this stuff. So what we're gonna have to do, send someone out on the ice. Out here in all this ice, as far south as we are, there's no way in hell I expect this to happen. I mean, we figured, you know, below Vermont, it can't freeze. <laughs> Holy shit, I think all of North America freezes. <laughs> there's no way we expected any of this. We're stuck out here in ice, you know? It's, we just talked to our buddies back home. It's warmer up in Canada right now. <laughs> this is absolutely incredible, man. I don't know if you're catching this shoreline going by. Catch that shoreline, bro. I've heard of going with the flow before, but this is ridiculous. I mean, we're basically out there in uh, in the middle of the river, just floating downstream at the same speed as the ice that's going by, and uh, tell you what, it's not very fast. But we have no choice but to just float with the with the icebergs. I mean, even if we could put our paddles in the water, we can't go anywhere because there's nothing but ice in our way. Brother. It was too quick to be a soaker. Right now we're we're basically yeah, surrounded by ice. Cool. There's there's no room to leave the canoe in the water. If we leave the canoe in the water right now, it's gonna get mashed by chunks of ice as we hit the bends. As we go around turns, the ice condenses and it's gonna smash our canoe, it's gonna break it apart. So what we have to do is we have to haul the canoe up onto a block of ice, sit on that freezing cold block of ice float all day. Ah, this is the part where we get to drink beer and float down river. Yeah, no, I guess I should be feeling a lot worse off because this is probably the most risky scenario we've been in. Definitely, yeah, it's definitely the most dangerous scenario we've been in. Right behind me there is a wing wall sticking out. You can kind of get a little bit of a grasp of how fast we're going. It's not too quick, but it's three miles an hour. This is the same speed we'd be doing in a lake right now if we were both paddling. So it's not such a bad deal to be stuck here in the Missouri. We're about to go into a little wing wall here, kind of an eddy in the current where it swirls around. We have no way of navigating the iceberg, so we're going to see what happens. This is where the ice all jams together. This is exactly why we stay on an iceberg because if we're just in the canoe here, this is where all the pieces of ice collide and it kind of bombards the canoe with ice, it crushes the canoe, it puts a lot of wear on the canoe, it's really not good for it. Holy shit! This is a pretty amazing situation. <laughs> We're floating down a river on an iceberg. Did I expect this to happen? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I definitely expected this one. Are you out of your freaking mind, man? <laughs> oh boy. 
You know, at this point, there's not really much we can do. All we can do is sit here and laugh. Really, I, I never expect to be in this situation, but now we're here, we, we just gotta go with it. I'm feeling like this is the best thing we've ever done, Bri. Hey, dude? Oh, yeah. Have we not picked the cool adventure? <laughs> <laughs> All we can do is laugh at this point, you know? I mean, nothing's gonna make this situation any better. So, we gotta take it as it is. We have no choice but to float down the river with the icebergs. We're one with the icebergs. This is how we'll be tracking distance for the next five days. And you know what? I'm thrilled. Christmas. We get to spend Christmas on an iceberg, Bri. Bad thing about being out in icebergs is we can't have a fire. Yeah, we can. <laughs> we don't have anything to burn. Today we didn't bring any supplies, but you just wait till tomorrow. You know what, it, it's absolutely insane out here right now, but it's making for great footage. I mean, I don't, I haven't seen anyone as stupid as us. I jumped from one ice cube to another ice cube onto a third ice cube to set up the freaking camera, and then I jumped all the way back to the canoe to film us. That's how you play iceberg hopping. Where the hell is that beer store? I think that would be a long way away. We've traveled 10 miles already on icebergs. Floating down the river on ice is painstakingly slow. We only move about 3 miles an hour, the, the flow of the river, and we do maybe about 20 miles a day. We did this for about 4 to 5 days, so, you know, in 4 to 5 days we tracked at most 100 miles. Woo! And this was all, uh, all right around Christmas time too. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. You thought your family Christmas get-togethers were weird. We're on an iceberg. Yeah, we're on an iceberg. I think we topped the weird. Yeah. We're traveling about 20 miles a day, just with the river's current, you know, because we can't go any faster than the ice blocks. And at this rate, still heading east, we're not even heading south. Well, we're definitely not getting south anytime soon. We're stuck in this crap. 